copy written production of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.
And just as a reminder, these are the rules that we published for ourselves when we did our very first meeting back on May 5th. Um, and the first one, of course, I just wanted to highlight today is mutual respect. I noticed the last couple of meetings got a little bit out of control. People kind of say some things. Let's not yell out or remember what we're at. Let's talk about what the subject is. And then finally, this is just to reiterate what uh, John kicked off. This is added rules for the guests that are here. And that is, the gallery is for members to have an opportunity to see how the committee is operating. Um, and not to make personal comments or express personal views about what the committee should decide. As John said, if you have something, take notes. What you're doing, work with your representative that's on the committee. It's up to the members on the committee to listen to the participants that you represent and then come back to us either the next week or whatever and talk about it. Uh, committee members represent a wide range of members. This is just a reminder for ourselves, each of us represent a group, um, but you also have to put a big hat on from time to time and say what's good for some city in total. Um, guests should rely upon the committee members to properly represent them. Okay, so we'll reinforce this and, uh, as we go along. The next part of the presentation, I'll get turn it over to John again, and it's really, unless you want me to continue. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and this is really to set the stage for something we said in the beginning, which is data-driven decision-making is what we're looking at. This is why we've spent time over the last month or so looking at data, so that we can use that to make decisions about how we want to spend significant sums of money to meet significant needs that our community has. So, key criteria that we have all the time is how many members use the activity, how much space does it require. I think most of us realize that our geography is fixed. We're not buying any more land. We have to figure out a good way to use what we do have, which means you can expand some activities, maybe you have to contract other activities. Um, but space is an important consideration. And finally, cost. Uh, we can't do things that just cost too much money. We have a limited amount of money to use, and we have to use it wisely considering these, these factors. So uh, this is just to reiterate, uh, and quite frankly, I like the article that our president wrote back in, was it March, about data-driven uh, decision-making within here. Yeah, thank you. And this is just reinforcing that this is what we're doing in this committee as well, which is why we're spending time with collecting the data. Oh, I'll go back here. I, I put this in here, start with the best data available. No data is always perfect, right? But sometimes you can look at a, you can look at a number and let's say it's 3,000. And somebody says, well, it didn't include, you know, Susie that came in to use the facility on Sunday night or some other thing like that. But what you have to say to yourself, what would happen if you took the 3,000 and doubled it? Would it change your decision? Or if you tripled it? In other words, when you're making a decision, data, the, the amount of the data has to be relevant. A significant change would change your outcome. If it's not, it's not worth talking about. And so if people bring up those nits, I'll probably call you out of it. Uh, and then, John, I'm going to let you go through this part. Okay. Now, as you remember, the, the first day when we were in here, we said we're going to identify measurements in order to evaluate alternatives. And we're getting to that point where we're going to have alternatives presented, and we're going to go back to what measurements we agreed we will judge each of those alternatives by. The first one I'd like to point out is whether the amenity helps fulfill the Long Range Planning Committee's proposed mission, vision, and values. Now, um, we're, I will distribute again, but I think they're on the uh, Genius, they're out there on the SAC website. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, so you can access those, and Gene will show you where they are at the end. Um, but you gotta ask yourself, you're gonna put the board hat on, and you're gonna say, is this, meeting the mission, vision, and values. The second is how, and Jeff, this was to your use, how much use is this amenity that you're proposing going to get? Okay? And usually, you know, history is used to project the future, but not always. Sometimes 
the future, there are things that you can see that the future holds that aren't represented in the historical data. And again, to Jeff's point, the historical data is not always 100% complete. Nobody, and I mean nobody, makes a decision on 100% data. I've never done it. When I go in to buy a car, do I know 100% of what that guy is talking to the manager about? I think it's baseball and football because they already know they're going to give me $1,000 off. But you don't know for a fact what it is. So there, you've got to trust the historical data that you have. The other thing we've got to look at, we have a limited amount of money. We always will have a limited amount of money. Uh, and it may seem like a lot to you. For an individual, the amount of money that we're talking about seems like a lot of money. But please remember, there are eight golf courses, there are eight rec centers, eight rec centers, there's Duffield Land Dog Park, there's the Sun Bowl, there's the softball field, so on and so forth. So, I mean, it's like, it, there's a lot to take into account with a limited capital budget. The next thing is, of course, your estimated operating costs. And whenever you build a new facility, that's, that's new to you. You may not have a good reference point with which to estimate operating costs. Now, if we build a pool, Kevin, I, I think you would say we probably know from experience what cool, cool chemicals cost and repairs and maintenance and so on and so forth. If we were to build an ice rink, I don't think anybody here would have a clue as to what the, the maintenance costs. Well, we have to look at that because if that becomes a burden down the road, uh, it's going to hamstring the organization. You're going to find that you can do less and less and less, and your flexibility is limited. Uh, the other thing that was mentioned was qualitative factors. You know, the quality of, of the amenity, in terms of rounding out the offering that all of all amenities that we have in Sun City, and we have a lot. There, uh, when I look at the comparison chart of amenities for other communities, very few communities offer as many amenities as we do, mainly because of the clubs and volunteers uh, that we have so many. Uh, then we have to ask ourselves attractiveness to the members and prospective members. So when I say, say members, you know, I kind of look at our demographic as a pie chart with three, three slices, there are folks that have probably been here for 30, 40 years, and they can no longer enjoy all the amenities that we provide. And, but they enjoy being in Sun City. And they did enjoy the amenities when they were able to. There's another third, I think as the survey says, that are inactive by choice. They don't come out and participate. And from my perspective as a board member, that's the ones I'm interested in getting out there into the, into the fold. Uh, and then there's a third, and you all represent that last third. They're out there and active and enjoying the amenities. Uh, so we've got to keep that in mind. And, and then prospective members. And I think one of the things we've decided with prospective members is that they will have a different life circumstance than we do. They will probably work longer, and they will probably need to be able to volunteer less. Uh, that's two of the things that have come out of the survey. Uh, the last thing, of course, not the, the next last thing, redundancy of facilities. So yeah, if you build the same thing one after another, and they're all a mile apart, you're going to have excess capacity. Uh, so if there's a, uh, a walking track within seven tenths of a mile of the facility, does it make sense to build another walking track? I don't know. Uh, you got to answer that question. And then, of course, the disruption. You know, some things are, are low-hanging fruit, right? You can do some things very quickly without disrupting hardly any activities. There are some things that are going to disrupt 
a lot of activities. And so as you look at these alternatives that will be presented in the next few weeks, I want you, and you'll have it, you have a sheet in front of you whereby you will measure each of these by high, low, high, medium, or low as to whether or not it fulfills those objectives. Okay, and then as I was saying, and I don't need to dwell on this, everything gets measured off of option two. Right? This is alternatives to option two. So if you say something superior to option two, we start, here's what option two delivers, here's the cost, and then you gotta look at what amenities are you providing with an alternative, what's the estimated cost. And one of our goals here with this worksheet is to help you keep track of the alternatives so that when you go back and think, now which one had a pool next to another pool? And you'll be able to see from here and you'll be able to track your individual ranking of that here. And of course, whenever an alternative is presented, you'll also have the slide presentation for that alternative. So that's the purpose of giving you these tools to help you, uh, and here you can see this is the other tool, to help you rank in your own mind particular alternatives. Now, as we go along, you may decide that there's something else that's critically important in, in measuring these things. And so these are not necessarily fixed. There could be another thing. Uh, but these are the eight that we agreed to. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague to recap uh, the member usage data. OK, just as the title says, what I wanted to do at this point in time is take the next 20, 30 minutes and just kind of review what was the key data that we've looked at over the last month and a half. And I want to have a discussion then with the members of the committee that are here. What are the takeaways from this data? What, what do you take away from it? So just to recap, in phase two here, our data analysis recap, over the, these last four meetings, um, these were the information or data we looked at. We took tours performing arts centers. We had uh, the utilization of facilities report done by uh, the management that was done that covered the years 2015 to 2019. Um, I presented some information on 2002, which has brought the utilization data more up to date. Um, we also talked about the player, Players Club activity. Uh, finally, uh, last week, we took, took a look at the pickleball court usage and uh, there's a schedule in there with performing arts site analysis. What are some factors that you need to look at uh, when you're picking a location to put a facility like that? So that's, that's the data that we've looked at so far. So I've kind of pulled out some selected slides just, just to get the discussion going a little bit. This is from the very first presentation that was done on the data that was from 2015 to 2019. Does anybody recall anything that was important that was in this presentation? Like, which activities are growing? Oh, pickleball. Pickleball is growing. Okay, so that was a takeaway for us, right? Mm -hmm. That's something that was different, that it's growing. Mm -hmm. was, was, there, was there something else that popped out of here for anybody? Uh, bowling is bowling a long-term. And bowling, and bowling was decreasing significantly. Yes, ma'am. It's not on there, but dancing is growing a lot. Yeah. Okay. Dancing. Yeah. <coughs> but but well, the dancing was is growing a lot. But how big is dancing? Okay, the line dance club has between 550 and 600 okay. members alone just okay. line dancing. It, okay, and I get that. Okay, so that's 500. Yeah. Okay. So if you look at pickleball, it's 70,000. And that's small. No, no. Right no, here. No, no. Not right Users. here. Usage. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this was their report though. Okay. So I'm just saying, what did we get out of their report? Their report didn't talk about dancing. And it didn't talk about all the other hundred clubs that we have. These were the primary 
pieces that they talked about that were most significant to Sun City. I didn't create this report, but it was well done yeah. in terms of the It data. was from the Long Range Planning Committee. It was their analysis. Yeah. That's where this came from. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but the point is, it was prepared. The data is accurate. And uh, now I'm just trying to say to us, what, does, what did this data, what's the takeaway from it? And again, it doesn't answer every question that wasn't intended to. But we just talked about something that it said it was going down. It said something, uh, tennis it said was going down. Mm -hmm. Golf, golf was, going, was down. going up. Golf right? was going down. And yes, golf was going down. But this is from 2015 to 2019. That's correct. What our statistics show the same kind of something going down or something increasing if it was 2020 to 2020. Okay, now that's the presentation that I gave, which will be on the next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> same way. That'll cost you five dollars. Okay, <laughs> we'll cost you five dollars for, yeah, for the same way. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> we go over speakeasies. <laughs> uh, and again, this is an example. Let's stay focused on what the topic is. It was this analysis and this report which was a piece of valuable information for us. And I'm just trying to get us to recall and remember what it was and what was important in it. Um, and then we'll move on to other pieces. Well, Jeff, and, uh, I think also... Go ahead, John. We said, and this may not be this, this particular thing. We said that the three biggest activities in terms of usage are golf, fitness, and swimming. Yes, absolutely. No, the top three. Those are like the top three. That's the big three. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Oh. It also highlighted one of the golf courses as being um, significantly underperforming compared to the other golf courses. That's correct. They're, they're not all equal. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, one thing I've thought of since we've seen this is two of the three of the most popular activities we have are not influenced much by weather. You can go into a fitness center. It doesn't matter if it's 120 or if it's 40. 12 months out of the year. You can right. go 12 months out of the year from the time that the yeah. facility opens to the time it closes. Swimming, I suppose when it's 40 degrees, you might not want to, but the pool is heated. So a couple of the activities that are high use are also available. And even golf you could do 12 months out of the year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, yeah. right. You're, right. you're right about that, Patrick. But it has an implication of what you just said. And she just brought it up. It's interesting that bowling is going down even though you can do it indoors. Indoors any time of the so day. So there's something else happening there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but uh, you let in, but that, that perception that you made was a good one because it says when we're looking at our activities, we have to remember that you know for four months of the year it's unbearably hot here. So when we're looking at some activities, we have to say, is that something that we need to put indoors versus outdoors? Because like you said, fitness centers is indoors all the time. So it's not a barrier. So the data is telling us that we should consider that when we're looking, looking at what we're trying to do. I don't think we can put a golf course indoors, but I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> a virtual golf. <laughs> I saw it on Hunger Games. <laughs> okay, um, the next thing, and this now leads into the presentation that I gave for some of the data, which is now 2022. So this is an update, and it basically skipped the two years that were COVID related. And, but that's why I thought the first report was very relevant in terms of it covered a five year period. But this is, just brings it up to date, and this is something we just talked about, what are the, the big three? And the big three account for 60% of all our members' activity is in those three. Uh, bowling is still big, um, even though the arrow says, if you look at the data, it's, it was trending downward for actually a considerable period of time. Um, pickleball, over the same considerable period of time, has, has gone up from like 10,000 to 70,000 or something like that. Um, and uh, tennis, of course, is small and getting smaller by the moment um, is really what the data was showing. So this was the takeaway, just big picture now of, of what we're looking at. And then go to that next one, please. Basketball. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> basketball. Yeah. Well, somebody says to me, well, you know, we don't really count all the people. Okay, multiply the number by 10. Does it really change anything we're going to do? Yeah. You but think about it. That's what I meant about materiality of the number. We know 
none of these numbers are 100% precise, but are they directionally correct? Yes. Do we have a basketball court? Yes. One out it's like outside. 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 It's like this big on the yeah. back side of the marionette. So we've got to be careful about measuring very basketball. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. Well, very yes. Yeah. And it's this big. The answer is yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a court. It's not a court. Okay, hang on. Yes. Yeah. 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 And just to add to that, I mean, we have a basketball court. But we also live in an area where you can be outside for a large part of the year, everything but summer. And I want to ask you guys, how many, how many basketball hoops have you seen in a driveway? How many people love basketball enough to be finding a way to play it above and beyond the one court we have? And I think that's pretty close to zero. Oh, they also so, do. They yeah. travel to surprise. Hmm? They travel to surprise. The few are interested, yeah. Or to be able to. I mean, just shooting hoops in the driveway probably thing. wouldn't allow it here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
marked in orange is anything over 15,000. Purple is between 10,000 and 15,000. This is people that actually checked in to do a, to do a sport. There are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that are above 15,000. Okay, only eight clubs that meet that. And that's I'm lumping together, for instance, the five lawn bowling clubs together when I do that, or the, uh, the play and ceramics clubs. Uh, but if you get down here, you know, you get down to here, my, everything that's in pink here is um, four to 5,000, and everything that's not marked is less than 4,000. So you're talking about it, and we actually have the data of what the attendance summary was, and it's accurate. It's accurate. It's yeah. the best data that we have. Yeah. If anybody well, wants to see it, I'm glad to share it with you. But my point still be that that doesn't reflect all of the clubs I just mentioned. No. Because you have audience comes to, to that that doesn't reflect in there. I mean, I'm sorry, what doesn't reflect? Bill, that's member audiences. Oh, mm -hmm. non members. Okay, but we have member audiences yeah. for all those things too. When the uh, piano club puts on a performance. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's true. That is not included. That's okay. the, uh, the well, that's the point I'm trying to make. But then the question is, void there, so we have to okay. recognize the void. We we recognize it, but now I have to ask you: Is it material? Yes. If yeah. you have a club and it's got three thousand, you double the number for audience, or you triple the number, it's still less than one percent. This is the same. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the data. That's. I'm well, sorry. I that's know, bad. What I just said does, is different than the data you're giving me. Because you take uh, the piano club or the concert yes. band. Is the concert on there or the piano club on there? The oh, piano, so the piano club is, we don't have the numbers for audience participation, but we, you provided us with the audience participation for the players club, for all everything you did. And if we added that to the numbers of actual uh, check-in points for the players people, right. That's the number that you're, you're wanting us to, to look at. That number is still way down at the bottom of this chart. Way down at the bottom of the chart. So even with, so, I mean, you don't have, do you have anything uh, close to 70,000 people that come to your performances in one year? Okay, so at this point, no, I, wait, I, I don't want to, let's not beat a dead horse here. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. what we need to do is get, if you'd be okay with it and yourself, let's meet after this meeting and sit and go through this spreadsheet and understand. But, in the context of this chart, the things that you mentioned are going to have data points below 10,000. If it's below 10,000, it's going to be less than 1%. And that's just the math of it. Yeah. So, so you can take it. No. Huh? <laughs> so we'll do it after the meeting, okay? We've talked about it enough. You need to know now. No. Okay. Well, I think, I think everybody heard your point. Well, but there, there's a big void there, and you're just. No, I don't know if it's a big boy. We don't know if it's a big boy. I know what it is. Well, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I mean, it's... Yeah. Yes, sir. We're, you're confusing a piano club and a ukulele club. They don't have ukulele courts. They don't have ukulele buildings like bowling alleys. They can right. play in any of our bigger facilities, like a performing arts theater, or they play at Fairway in that upper stage area. So. That is, has nothing to do with this, because those things can exist even if we remove the tennis court. You're, you're trying to confuse things that people do in, inside a building that already exists with these things that take separate buildings. Or facilities. Okay. Any other points on this one before I go to the next one? Okay, I think we've got the takeaways from this slide. And we'll revisit it for you. So and then this was just some, this was really the same data, just look at year to date 2003. Again, we had the study that was five year data, we looked at 2002, this is a little bit year to date 2023, and it went through April year to date. And I, I just to give us a view of what things are by center in terms of these activities. Um, so we had almost 400,000, and of course it's probably no big surprise that the Bell Rec Center is counts for 29% of the activities. So, our centers. Fairway comes in second, and you can see at the bottom here you got Lakeview, Mountain View, and Oakmont uh, are the bottom three. So, what inference would you make from that? Any? And Any? some are smaller than others for one. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's true. They need to be older. They need to be They're updated. Older. <laughs> well, I'll adopt the bottom three 
much yeah. older compared to the top three yeah. uh, in terms of the size of the fitness centers, the equipment, the pools, uh, everything about them. They're uh, different. Well, Lakeview is also a lot of administrative. You take the administration out of Lakeview, and there's a lot of contacts there. Okay. So their numbers would be lower. Uh, no, yeah, this is for uh, yeah. Lake, Lakeview, it's just, this is just members. This, is is a, this right. isn't administrative. Yeah. No, but I'm saying a lot of Lakeview is used for administration, yeah. or if it was used for member things, it would be different. Could be. Yeah. That, that would be yeah. an inference that yeah. would come from that. Uh, I, I get that. Yeah. yeah. But those three rec centers don't have the ability for clubs to use them. They don't have the meeting rooms, they don't have whatever that fairway might have, or bell. You've got the, the uh, jewelry, you've got the, yeah. the crafts and all that. Yeah. So they're, yeah. they're just not built for a lot of clubs to use them. And yeah. maybe because they are more senior than a lot of other rec centers. Mm -hmm. They're okay. older and smaller. Oh, okay, maybe, yes. Just a historical fact. Um, under the idea of if you build it, they will come. Fairway was 30 some thousand feet, the old fairway. The new one is 90,000 square feet. Now the numbers are way up on fairway compared to what they used to be under the old building. Right. Just a it's historical nice. fact. Yeah. yeah. What else is unique about fairway? Where does it sit locationally wise? Right. It sits where it sits. What's, what's south of it? Mount 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 what's north of it? So it's the newest and biggest <laughs> and best, yeah. and then it's surrounded by older, smaller uh, facilities. <laughs> so that's an inference you could make from this data. That's what I wanted us to, mm -hmm. to get out of it. Yes, John. Um, go ahead, Tim. I just wanted to touch back on Bill's um, comments too, yes. because I kind of I, I, I agree, and I know what you're trying to to get at. I think the data is only as good as the data that has been given to our CSC. Yes, yes. And unfortunately, when we put on our, our shows for dance, we don't track the number of people coming into Sundial. Um, we have to just base it off of tickets sold. And, and there could be even more that come in that day that we're unaware of. Um, so the data is good, but it's only as good as what was given yes. to our CSC. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Yes. An example, um, Oakmont versus Fairway. Yep. When Oakmont was remodeled, okay. uh, uh, people would say, well, we need a deeper pool for lap pools because it was meant to be a sport pool with not as deep water. Well, people said, well, I don't want to go any farther than Oakmont. So that design had to be redone to accommodate lap pools, lap lanes for the pool, even though Fairway would have them or Bell would have them. But because people didn't want to go another two miles, they had to redesign that pool. Yeah. So uh, there was member in influence as to how Oakland ended up the way it did. Okay. Mm -hmm. John? Yeah, I think the other implication that I get from not only this data but the other data is that we do have substantial overcapacity in our facilities. Um, you know, 30% usage of multi-purpose space. Uh, Typically, our facilities are busiest from 9 to 12, and <coughs> for the peak hours. And but the facility can serve for you know, 12 hours a day. So the thing that that leads me to is you, uh, you can't try to build eight super centers because if you have eight super centers, you're, you're again you're duplicating uh, facilities, and all you're doing is, is spreading that one third of active people over more facilities. So that, just kind of keep that in mind when we look at cost utilization, are we cannibalizing, if we build something like that's redundant, are we cannibalizing, let's say, fairway? So you have 400 walkers at fairway, but now you have a, uh, a walking track in Mountain View, and so now 200 go to Mountain View and 200 go to fairway. That's just a, okay. Right. But that's, that's a fair point, and, and that's kind of my point, is fairway is overdone during busy times, right. where you don't want to go there because there's too many people, it's too crowded, and you just don't want to be part of that crowd. 
Right. And if I want to use instead Mountain View as my main facility for exercise, the last thing I want to do is go and use the, you know, the exercise portion that use the machines, and then I have to go walk out, get in my car, and drive up to Fairway so I can go and do my walk. Right. So, wait yeah. a minute, you're going to drive to go walk. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of summer. That's in the middle the of summer. I'm not driving. <laughs> in the middle of summer, I'm not going to stay. I'm going to go walk up there. Walk there. I need that. Unless I, I want to do it at 5 a.m. when they're it's not even open yet. How many times do you get there? Isn't that like at the okay. mall? You circle the mall three right. times looking for that close spot. Right. Right. You yeah. the mall, and you walk the whole mall. <laughs> 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 Air conditioned, not air conditioned. We, we understand too. <laughs> okay. I just have a zing, you're so sorry. <laughs> okay. So then, uh, you know, just a, uh, this was also one of those slides that was before. Now I just took the same centers and I called out this two activities and I put a third one in there because it was growing a lot. Uh, but I said swimming and fitness, and of course it's exactly what we were just talking about here. You have Bell, which is big and beautiful and it's got all the equipment in it, it's number one followed by Sundial and Fairway of Marionette. And then, of course, here's the bottom three again. Um, but I'm surprised about this one because it's got a great fitness center there. Isn't Sundial then, shouldn't Sundial be number one? 74,000? Yes, it is swim. No, no, I'm, just it's not oh, it's I'm just kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his car to go for a walk. So you know, it, was, was, it was just all of them. I got it now. <laughs>
what's the implication of what you just see there with those numbers? It's going down. It's, it, it's going down, right? Another question you might say, and this club's been around for, uh, correct me, 60 years is a good number? 61. Okay. So then the question is, what's happening over this period of time from 1985 to 2020? This was COVID here, but let's say it was 2019. What, what's caused the, the decline to go down? Yes. Personally, I think it's the facility. I mean, people are getting used to seeing better facilities, working in better facilities. There's much more in the valley that is up to date, and okay. that's what you see. And when you walk into Mountain View, it looks exactly like my gymnasium did when I was in elementary school. Oh. <laughs> I mean, identical identical to and that was like in the 60s people so yeah i i think really it's purely the facility the that's cool. I, another reason for that is then that time period that has been going down there were probably eight long-range planning proposals for the performing arts center during that time okay and over those years it got knocked down for this or that or that or this and people are, are disillusioned. Okay. So you got to take that into consideration. Okay. You know, we've been beat up for you know 20 years of nothing getting done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the implication there is, without a performing arts center, the number of residents that want to participate in the players' club uh, declined. Well, so and, and the, right. the fact that they, you know, were trying to get something done and were ignored. Uh, okay. But I think I summarized with the point that you made. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do we have any idea what community theater is like? Are we are is community theater out there growing and they will sometime come here? Or is it dying out there and they're not gonna come here? Do we have a potential of growth? You're you're saying if if you had a performing arts center here, would it bring people in from outside right. the community? And is it popular in arts outside community? He's looking for a trend over time. Yeah. Are all these little cities with their performing arts centers seeing a decline as well? Yes. I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen the data on that, but it's a darn good question that we should think about. We should research. I don't know if anybody else has any information about that. And I think we should research that. Somewhere. Yeah, I do too. I think yeah. that's, a, that's, a, I mean, that's a good question for us to put. There's national trends and articles, so let us. But even, Research. but even locally here, we, and, and so yeah. that'll be something we'll look at. Yeah. Okay. That'll be in a, in, in a week or two. We have somebody <laughs> working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to give her a date I think because I know she's got a lot on her plate. <laughs> locally in the last 20 years, we've seen the Broadway theater come in and be very successful at Arrowhead. Oh, We've yeah. seen Peoria build a performing arts center and be very successful. They have endless activities there. We see Surprise has one. We see Sun City West has added one. So, okay. you so, know, I mean, okay. we're seeing people the are seeing is, that there's a need the out there. And see what it says. Yeah. 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 Excellent point to think infer it's from this. Question. Okay. So then the question is, is, we have to ask ourselves, is if we go to performing arts center, would this, would this number go back up to this? We don't know, but that's, this is the reason we look at data. And when we go to invest millions of dollars, we'd have to answer that question for ourselves and say, is it reasonable to assume that? Mm -hmm. Or what level? And that's true for every activity that's up here, right? You can look at where you're at today. When you build something, and it's a building, <laughs> it's gonna be there for a while. Mm -hmm. is, is the growth of our, is our member use gonna go up with it? Yes, sir. The, the member number, of who's in the club may not go up that drastically, but I guarantee you the audience and the members of Sun City as a whole will skyrocket. Okay, well that's a perfect that's a perfect lead into the next slide. Thank you. <laughs> Another five bucks. Another five bucks. <laughs> I'm getting poor, but I'm happy with it. Um, and again, this was information that uh, Bill got from the Players Club. We looked at it before. We looked at what the attendance was. Um, and of course, you'll notice that um, prior to COVID, it was here, and the average prior to COVID was about 4,700, which is these years here. When you look at it after, of course, it's the 
small here, and, it, and, it, and then it picked up from 21 to 32 here. So then the question is, is when we look at this going out, right, if we look at a performing arts center, we have to say to ourselves, when we think about the building and its use, are we going to use this number to help justify what it is? Or are we going to use this number? Or do we think it's this number plus some growth? And it's 5,000 or 6,000. All this data here is telling us this is a jumping off point for the analysis. We now have to then put our hats on and say, what's a reasonable estimate that's going to be used to justify the project? Right? However, that's just the players. No? That's correct. This is the players. Right. right. So right. when you add in the other ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll have to go down to the bottom there well, for the number. It's not 4,000. It's 12,750. So that, yeah. So that, I, if you go back to the auditorium that was there, that slide that I showed you earlier, what were the two big activities? Players Club, that's this, this number here. The next one was movies. So the actual number was this, 5,500. 5, and I says, okay, let's just, okay, I'm trying to get us to think now, do a what if, right? What if the number, if we had a really nice facility on the seat? <laughs> Will the number go to 8,000? Or is it 10? I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to get you to think about this is what we need to think about. Is this, is this going to be 4,700? Is this going to be 8? If it is, this is one, one scenario here. It's 12, right? So now we're going to invest 12 million bucks. Right? Jeff, and we need space. And the space is how many square feet? 37,000 37, square feet. So I, I'm bringing this up because I want to link three things back to what John had on the slide that we had to be. Space, you've got 37,000 square feet, so you've got to find a future property that you can fit that. Two, what it costs, and three, what the activity is. So those are the three things that we put together to find a solution. Yes, ma'am. I have a little bit of a problem with these numbers. You need to add in, what is it, 12,700 yeah. likely attendance? Now add in the attendance for the handbill ringers and add the attendance for the, yep. the orchestra and all the other clubs to okay. see what you really have for attendance okay. let's, compare let's, it to the 12 let's million. Take an, let's, let's just assume something. Just, we're, we're simulating here, right? Let's put our thinking caps up. So I took this base number, which is 8, and I scaled it up to 12. Let's say there's other stuff and the number's 24. Let's double the number. I have no idea what all those little things are. Yep. Right? Let's say it's 24. Okay, so it's 24. So this is number is 0.8. It's one and a half percent of our total activities. It's still 12 million bucks, mm -hmm. and we still need 37,000 square feet. But does it going from 12 to 24 really change that dynamic much? We don't know if we need 37,000 square feet. That's okay, but that's a, okay. <laughs> that's just thank you. Yeah. Now we're getting better. Now. <laughs> Another five bucks. <laughs> I need a broken. Another five bucks. I need to get paid five bucks for okay. the driving to work. Right. <laughs> that was at least one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me, let me, oh, oh, I went too far. Okay, so one of the things I I had put on this slide that I didn't talk about before, but look at it now. This is the average attendance um, at these performances. Or something like this. So then my question was when I looked at this, I said, why would we not build a performing arts center that's maybe 275? Why would it ever go bigger than that? If you had more people that wanted to see it built, couldn't you just add another show? Or have two weeks of the show, because you guys are rock stars. <laughs> <laughs> my, my point is, the, the reason I'm thinking about that is if you reduce the number of seats, you don't need the 37,000 square feet building. And if you don't need that, you don't need 12 million bucks. You can cut the number in half. But, but you So this is a scenario of what the data could imply to us. As, as an architect, I gotta say, it's not the seats that are taking up those 37,000 square feet. Well, I know that. It's all the other stuff. Yeah. The seats, you're gonna eat those 400 seats and keep the versatility of this right. and cut it way down in size and still maintain that number of seats. And yeah, to me, it's yeah. more important to maintain the number of seats and the amount of usage available okay. than to cut, okay, than to have the other would you, would you build something that was over 300 seats based on this? 
I wouldn't in reality that, like, if you go to... Um, no, I'm just based on our data. I mean, people are hungry. I'm, I'm just saying I'm looking at this. Why would I get something that's 300 seats? I, I would go more seats. I would go more seats. I'd go 350. 350. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not this number of seats that's costing you the money. It's the everything else that's been oh, added onto this facility that's costing you right. the money. So if why wouldn't you adjust to allow for more in case we grow and in case there's use for that? Okay. Then to say, hey, we're just going to keep it itty bitty, but still throw the money out there. Okay, I just so, say, then, so then what you're saying is, let's, we, only, we only need about 275 seats based on our historical data. But let's build 350 and hope that this number gets bigger. Well, I'm it's sorry. It's got to get bigger. Um, that's 275 people willing to go and sit in those Oops, horrible sorry. seats and on a flat well, floor. Anyway. So, yeah. so this is, now, now she brought up a good point yeah. uh, one minute ago. Yeah. She brought up a good point because that's what, when we say what the projection is there, we're going to say, okay, it's not good. It's, we're going to get back to pre-COVID levels. That's assumption one. And two, because of a nice facility, <coughs> yeah, the number's going to double. I don't know, pick a number, right? The, the point is it's going to get bigger. That's the mm -hmm. assumption. I know personally I would not attend because I wouldn't be willing would to never. sit there. But I wouldn't be willing to go if there was a nice facility to attend it. Yeah. Okay. But so you got thing, my money then? Right. So, <laughs> so, then my box. So, <laughs> so these two points here are if you need 300 seats plus, and you still need a big building because you need all the... No, no, no. But no. you don't still need the big building. <laughs> there are ways okay, to Okay, maybe I, I said that wrong. Okay. No, I'm sorry. But if you go back to the data farther back than what you have, because I didn't get it clear. Oh. We had one musical that we set up 500 seats for one performance, and there were seven performances. Wow. So, okay, you know, lot. but we haven't done a musical since before COVID because COVID came and nobody wanted to do it. So yeah. the seats were spread out, and we didn't do musicals because right. of cost. Yeah. Because okay. we couldn't get an audience long enough to, to pay for okay. the cost of it. But even I mean, but these are your data doesn't that would show. be one of these. Would that be one of these years? These are the two highest, right? Okay. Like, yeah. No, 5,400 5, here. That's important. Yeah. You guess the, that's not for a whole year. Yes. No, it is. No, it is. Well, yeah, you gave it to me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, it is. Well, well unless, unless you, your data's wrong, then okay, we'll change well, it. Well, well, I'll pull up the data and look at it because yeah. what I showed you for uh, 2022 was 12,753 seats that we sold for the year. Okay, this is what you had for attendance. Look at your schedule. I have it. I can. And if it needs to change, let me change. Okay, this I'll is this is based on what your club put together. So right. yes, ma'am. So yes, sorry. I'm sorry. What is rushing? And I agree with you in terms of the number of seats and things like that. The more performances, though, that we have to schedule, logistically makes it harder at the club's office sure. to schedule all those performances. Like if I have to do, if we want to do our tap show there, we would probably need with limited seats at least three or four shows okay. based on what we've sold in the past plus all of their plays plus the ukulele club plus any of the other dancing so they have, you have to keep all that in mind too if you're increasing the number of performances for each club logistically it's going to be very very impossible we don't want to put on a show in the summer when everyone's gone no, of course. So, yeah. right. so, so you're also days. increasing the use of the $12 million facility. Yes, but it, it, may, be, it may be difficult scheduling. It but will be difficult scheduling. Right. So, be over this is, yeah. it, it, let's just explore what she said for this mm -hmm. moment. So, you know, again, based upon the worksheet that we got from the Player Club, you know, for 2022, they used it for 21 weeks. Well, they used it every day that week. Not important. They just said they got the whole. And then, but during peak seasons, uh, the usage rate is 75%. So there's still 25%, you know, a quarter of the space that's still available. Okay. Assuming the worst case scenario here, that they're using this for the full seven days during the week, which they don't all the time. 
Well, there's like so a stage. It, it may fit that, it may not. We'd have to look at it in more detail. Yeah, I'm just thinking logistically, if there's um, props on stage that are somehow right. or other attached to the stage for a performance, we don't need them for our show. It's just there's going to be a lot of maintenance and scheduling um, that I think is this is a, This is an excellent point that she brings up, having some experience mm -hmm. with performing arts centers. When you have a multiple-use performing arts center, theater, music, lectures and so forth, there's a switching cost when you go from one type of an event to another. So you bring up an excellent point, which goes back to what John talked about earlier, it adds to the operating cost of what you're doing. It also adds Sorry. to the cost of the building, because you may change how big the stage is, what the sound system is, because music is different than theater. And you have to have a building that facilitates uh, both types of performances that are in there. But, but thank you, because that leads into those those are the type of considerations. So the data is now getting us to think about when we get into the next stage, which John talked about, of looking at alternatives, these kinds of things that we just brought up here now are important. Can we schedule all the events? What are the switching costs to it? What do we use for an assumption in terms of number of people that are going to come there? And we'll have to document what our assumption is. We're going to, if it is what some of the things we talk about, then we'll write it down. So if a, the whole board sees it, to the community sees it. This isn't something that just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, John came up with <laughs> right. uh, okay. that we'll do. But in any case, uh, so this part of the discussion was good. John? Yeah, um, how many people went to the uh, Sun City West? Uh, no, I, I've been there. Was that the Sun City West? Yeah. I didn't. I'm going to give you. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> um, that, that, Facility is it 300? Just under 300. Just under 300. Just under 300. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But the whole facility is just 9,000 to 85. About 10,000 around. About 10,000 10, per feet. Yeah. So maybe to Susan's point, the the cost isn't necessarily in the seats. It's in this. It's back, in the back of the house. It's the support structure around that allows the performance to take place. But they manage it for 300 seats and 10,000 square feet. Yeah. So the storage is scale is not there. Oh, storage is not safe. Storage is not yeah. safe. I'm not saying pie in the sky that wouldn't be fabulous to have all that extra, but we're talking about a budget is what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. This is there's right. a difference it's between the pie in the sky yeah. perfect and the reality. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. So I actually have a question for the Players Club about this because um, that slide that you had up just a, a minute ago that shows basically a monopolization, how many weeks of the year out of oh, the 28 let me go weeks back that we would bit. have. I'm sorry. Um, you know, you're saying that yeah. you need seven weeks to prepare for a show, three shows, that's 21 weeks out of 28 weeks that exist during the high season. Um, so at Sun City West, they have a completely enclosed room behind the stage that's not quite as big as the stage, but it's well over half the size of the stage. So all of their practicing can take place back there. They can even set up their, their sets to get an idea of what this looks like for many of those weeks. And my question to you, Bill, would be, is it conceivable that the Players Club could say, we only need to have the stage for our monopolized use for the one week prior to a production and then the week of the production. So instead of having it for 21 out of 28 weeks, you would have it for six out of 28 weeks. So this is my question. Yeah. In, the, the, in the drawings that are what the Long Range Planning Committee recommended, there was that room to, to have just what you're saying. But there's not to that. Have the option, option two doesn't have a room like that. It was in option one. So, but there was a, a, a separate place for rehearsals that didn't take up the stage or the auditorium. Well, there, yeah, so the, the, the drawings are out here. We have their four rooms on the side of this facility. But you look at the size of the stage there, and each one of those rooms is like one tenth the size of the stage. I'm talking about a room at Sun City West. And remember, this is in a facility that is under 10,000 square feet total, that is 
well over half the size of the stage that's completely enclosable, which means that if you're back there practicing during the week and somebody wants to come in on Tuesday afternoon to do a lecture on Medicare usage or somebody wants to come in and do a travel log, it's absolutely not problematic whatsoever. But you need to have that kind of space. And I'm, it's kind of curious to me that we had a building that was you know, in our plans of 37,000 square feet, but no, it's not as functional as the 10,000 square feet that Sun City West has. Right. What's so under that stage we are proposing in there? Is there room under that stage for some of that work? No. no. Oh, you under mean like it? A, yeah. a, a oh. basement? There are a no. couple other points yeah. though, is yes. Sun City West, if you talk to them, they want more space. They, they, don't have enough space. Well, you keep saying it's only 10,000 square feet, and it is, but it, they want more than they've got. They so why would we build something that we want bigger to begin with? And What's the number? Is the number 20,000 or is it 25,000? 20,000. We could double what they had and still be almost at half of what we're proposing yeah. is the point. So it, it could be better designed. And I have a question to that too. Does Sun City West accommodate a fly? No. 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 And do we need to with the number of players and the number of things? Is it worth that kind of money to go up that high to accommodate? You know, when you can live without it. I'm sorry. It's wonderful. It's fabulous. It's, it'd, be, it'd be so cool. But can you live without it? I think for the size of what we have yeah, and the money we have. Anybody can live without anything. Well, exactly. I'm just saying, I think it, you could put on a great production without that extra cost and the, especially the extra height that's involved well, um, that in the is, building for that. It's 45, 45 feet to replied to put in that fly loft, which right. is four and a half floors plus right. a building. That's a massive amount of the cost. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, ma'am. Um, one point, go look at Peoria. It's three and a half stories. But uh, the university I worked with put in a new performing arts center, and they had in the, the fly kit for the scenery. The insurance rate went through the roof because now you're hanging all this stuff. And you got insurance right. You put a kid on that stage and you have to get another insurance policy. Any kid under 18 years old required a different rate because of that fly. There's well, not we don't have any of those. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you don't know. You could have a school want to use it. You don't know what's going to happen. So this this is also a good point. Okay. This, when we get into alternatives, when we get in the details of what the building looks like. These are yeah. operating and cost things that we need to address. With technology now, you can put a sheet up and have a scenery. A green screen. Just, yeah, just a green, and, and you've got your set. You don't even need sets. I don't know what that costs, but that would be interesting to look at. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's becoming yes. increasingly, wouldn't it be great? Well, we we actually saw that in Mason. Yeah. 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 Just project it on a, on a background. I'm sure if Channel 15 Weatherman can do it, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a technologist who's creating it. And, and I had this up as a previous uh, slide as well, and it was just to call our attention to that we have a number of auditoriums and what their usages are. Um, is there a possibility, not just for the Players Club, but for other clubs as well, to utilize this space better? Don't know, but it's something that we can think about as we're looking at alternatives mm -hmm. and how to meet the needs for clubs, that there is some space and you know, might not be in the same location. Um, and then um, I took a couple of slides from the presentation that was done on the pickleball courts. And again, this was the same thing. This was uh, a, a nice background in terms of what we've done here at Sun City in terms of the number of courts that we have. Uh, it started in 2003. I didn't realize that. Um, and the events that they hold in at uh, two centers. So we have Marionette at 35,000 square feet and Mountain View at. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not the same, it's the price. That yeah, we have. This just shows the, the member usage over time. And of course, you know, it started to club was what, 2003? And then it, so it's uh, like at 15,000 and now it's up to almost, it's at 70,000 now. So obviously, Question? there's the uses. Here. <laughs> yes, sir. This is for Dan. I, you're in charge of the pickleball, right? Well, yeah. I'm not <laughs> a I, I wish I was. <laughs> yeah. and, and you probably get blamed for a lot more, right? 27 pickleball courts, correct? Correct. Right. With your club growing the way it's growing, fiduciary responsibility here, how many courts do you need as a club? And would you like them all in one place or spread out? How would that work? 
Well, I think Good we questions. can use up to 40 courts easily because of the way the sport is growing. Uh -huh. um, do they all need to be in one facility? Yeah, in a perfect world. But right now, the big problem is the Mountain View we can't utilize because there's only seven courts there. All we can do there is have what's called open play. Okay. Our club can really cannot utilize the Mountain View. We can only utilize the Mountain And what's the number and of And I don't play pickleball, so how many do you need to do what you need well, to do? Well, Karen brought that up, and it'd be a minimum of 12, because we do a lot of activities called round robins and ladders and, and clinics, and we, not, only, not only do we need the, the courts for the activities, but we also have to have courts for open play. We have to have courts for RCSC club card holders. Mm -hmm. So, so what um, you're saying is a minimum of 12 at one location. Correct. A minimum. That's what I said. Right. Yeah. A minimum of 12. <laughs> Don't push it. Also, <laughs> at the bare minimum. Oh, okay. Yeah. Bare minimum. <laughs> I said it again. The <laughs> bare minimum of 12. And all at one location, which facilitates club activities to take place. Which help with club activities. Right, as opposed to sprinkling them all over the place. Okay. okay. Let me ask you this. Is it, is it important that any of those be air conditioned? Well, we just talked. Look, if we had some air conditioned courts, the numbers would really skyrocket. Okay. This goes back to what we talked very early in this discussion about is this one of those activities where people use it 12 months of the year, but because of the heat, it really makes it hard Since to Since you're do. asking me questions, this gentleman has brought up the point several times. If you build it, they will come. You're talking about the largest growing sport in the, maybe in the world right now. It was the largest growing sport among senior citizens. You want people to, I'm sorry, if, if lawn bowling or or miniature golf was the fastest growing sport among senior citizens. I'd be, let's build a bunch of miniature golf courses. Okay. Or let's build a bunch of lawn bowling. You want people to move here, get build the facilities that they need that they're going to want to come here for. Did he answer your question? Yes, I have one addition. Okay, go ahead. Is there any unused indoor space that would accommodate a pickleball court in Sun City? No, no. You, you need to have a 22 foot clearance yeah. below the lights, and then you've got lights, and then you've got a ceiling. ceiling. You don't have anything that you okay. can fit. But I, I just do also want to clarify one thing. There's, so there's two separate numbers that we're talking about. One of them was what number is the minimum number of workers that you want to have in one location? But the other question is how many courts do you need total? So if we agree that we're not going to build anywhere fewer than 12 courts, so we want to make sure that at any place that we have courts, we have a minimum of 12, then the question is, how, what's the total number of courts that we need? And so when I did this presentation, I made the point that even if we went from 27 to 45 courts, we would just be pulling even with the saturation of courts that Sun City West has, who, by the way, have plans to expand as well. Uh, beyond what they have right now, but we would be moving from being in last place to being tied for second last place in terms of court density if we had 45 courts. So, just the same. So, it run up real here. Yeah. We went from 27. From just, again, we're doing simulations here just to get what the data is telling us. If we took 27 courts and increased this to say 50, this number of 70, would it go to, would it double? So in well, some order of magnitude so like the, that. the other critical piece, I think, of my, for those who might have missed this presentation <coughs> last yeah. week, is that pickleball has been growing steadily in the United States for the last 15 years. But in the last two years, it has had an exponential growth curve. Mm -hmm. So they went from one year, 3 million, the next year, 8 million, to last year, on Jan uh, this year, on January 1st, 35.6 million, and on March 29th, 48 million people that have played pickleball in the last 12 months. So what you see is, you know, and we have to assume that that's going to affect us as well. It means that the number of people that are moving to Sun City, it's, you know, 48 million is one out of six people in the United States. That means people are moving here who already play pickleball, which is not something that had traditionally been the case. Especially when it starts in grade school. Exactly. Okay. Good discussion. Yes, ma'am. If we build 12 pickleball courts. And pickleball, 
Minimum. Minimum. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Yeah. Okay. If we build 40 pickleball courts, maximum. <laughs> and pickleball dot takes a dive. Everybody hates it. There's make something them, new. Make them tennis courts. Yes. What could be done with that? That's my question. What could be done with oh, that? So, so I, I would like to address that because we've actually talked about the possibility. Okay, we don't know what the next new biggest thing is going to be. There might be something that will indeed displace mm -hmm. golf, displace tennis, displace pickleball. We don't know what it will be. But building an indoor pickle, indoor or outdoor pickleball is like the most easily convertible thing that you could possibly imagine. Okay. Because you're talking about if you do a steel construction building with a big span, it has no interior wall, <laughs> you can reconfigure it any way that you want at very low cost. That's true. Right. Good. Yeah. I, I that's the same thing's true with tennis, right? It's yeah. just a court. You just take the yeah. wall, that's take encouraging the fences down, and there you go. So yeah. pickleball ball would be the same way. Good. Which is different than building a four wall structure. Or a golf course. Or a golf course. No. You could. Well, they come up with some new uses, but yeah. but you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, so it does have that possibility. But it could it could be, I mean, converted to indoor shuffleboard or oh, all yeah. kinds of things. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, moving yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Indoor indoor golf with a big screen. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Virtual golf. You could build an indoor mini golf. Course. Okay. This, by the way. Go cards. So, oh, 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 oh,
So right now, the Mountain View Fitness Room is, uh, Paul, I think 1,500 square feet or something yeah. like that. It's under 2,000 like square feet. Room. So we're talking about, the, you know, you could have the, these pickleball uh, courts and, in addition, a locker room downstairs like we have at Fairway with 15,000 square feet. So I think that the Fairway fitness area itself is about 5,000 square feet. So you could have that. You could replicate what we have at Fairway at Mountain View and have a spinning room and another room that could be used for dance, for yoga classes, whatever. That could all fit on what we have keeping the seven pickleball courts, keeping um, lawn bowling, it would involve having to reconfigure the mini golf area, but keeping mini golf there, and the sports pools, the lane pools, that's, that would all fit at Mountain View. Taking all so the so The only thing I want to do, that was an excellent description of an alternative. An alternative, mm -hmm. right. right. So right. we weren't yeah. really going to do that today, but I like ask? the question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is we're not going to take another question like that. <laughs> I just want to. Yes, ma'am. The only issue with that is that we're working off of option two, and that plan is working off of option one plans. Option two eliminates and takes all of those courts out and puts the performing arts center on top of them. That's right. So, these are these alternatives. Right. Yeah, well, I'm saying it's an alternative to option one. It's not an alternative to option two, which is what we were looking at. So well, it could be an well, alternative. No, it is, yeah. the Actually, it is. is that you would it's build an alternative. She's saying else. no performing yeah. arts center down there. Oh, yeah. if there was no performing arts that's center. That's what she's saying. You, you build it that was his question. What would happen? Right. That's, so that's a what if. Yeah. That's, that's a big what if. Those that's are alternatives. A, that's an excellent right. introduction into some of the alternatives we're going to get into in the coming weeks. And so thanks for the good, good discussion on that, for teeing it up. So this is at the end of what we're at. I'm hoping that the review of the data today just refreshes our minds as to what our users are doing and how much it is. But also, as we begin to make decisions and look at alternatives and understand what the data is, we'll have to make some informed assumptions about what growth of activities are going to be, what the costs are going to be, how much space it uses. Um, so this is to, to set the stage for those coming weeks' discussions uh, on that. So at that point, John, that's all I have for, for this. Anything? Oh, I'm Yes, sir. <laughs> Go ahead, Norm. You're going to let me talk. Yeah, I'll let you talk. Okay. Oops. Um, cu couple of things. I'm. I'm oh, oh, Lord. Oh, just right. one. Oh. Yeah. One's good. Right, I'm gone. One. one. Yes, I one. see the light. I, I missed my opening. I could have said, let there be light. <laughs> you could have. Um, I'm all for numbers. I like playing with numbers. Uh, because they, they do teach us a lot. Um, but I would like to throw in a word of caution here. Um, number one, if I understood yours, because I came in late, sorry about that. Um, we're comparing um, the percentages to uh, total usage. Now, we know that, but we don't know. We assume, which is always dangerous. We assume that a third of our people use the facilities, a third use some of the facilities, and a third probably aren't doing anything in the way of activities. We also know that the main goal of RCSC is to increase the activity level of its members. And that, to me, is the guiding principle. Um, we also know that we're the oldest retirement community around, and then that's a handicap, because they think, you know, like I told you before, there's articles written on, this is just God's waiting room, we come here and wait to die. Uh, which is not true, but that, that's the image out there, it has to compete with the portobellos and all those other places, shiny new things. Um, so we have to have, be, bear in mind, and budget and cost and usage are all important things and they're all important statistics, but, the most important one is we have to be able to compute, compete with all of those new facilities. Yeah. And when we built Fairway, which was a long time ago, probably before most of the people were here, there was a whole hullabaloo about we don't need to double the size of Fairway. 
and I'm back to the, if you build it, they will come. Yeah. Now it has a great usage down there. You can always talk about, well, it's only 37% usage or whatever, but uh, the point is a whole lot of members go in there and use it, which is one of our main goals, getting people off the recliners and out doing something. So we have to compete. So there's marketing values. Somebody mentioned, oh, do we need to duplicate things? You know, we've got a pool here, and we've got a pool three miles away, and we've got another pool two miles away. One of the advantages that we have that no other retirement community has is we have neighborhood centers. They cannot afford to build neighborhood centers anymore. But we have them. And that is a big selling point for getting people to move here. I don't want to go to the center that John goes to because I don't like him and I don't like all his buddies here. <laughs> but I, but I, can go, but I can go to, to, to Karen's center because I like those people. Yeah. This, this, this is an advantage that the other communities cannot match. We certainly don't want to ever destroy the advantage that the other communities can never have. The other issue I have, and be another 15 minutes. Uh, Check, please. Five. <laughs> I'll give you five bucks. Take um, 15. <laughs> is that we've been comparing this to the total usage, which is 1.9 million, 7 million, whatever mm -hmm. number we come up with. Um, but perhaps we ought to be looking at it as another number, and that is the one-third of the people that are using these facilities. You take one-third of 40,000 people, you're down to a pretty small number, which means a lot of our people are going three, four, five times a week to these activities. Mm -hmm. You compare the percentage, the numbers that you have here, to 13,000 people, it's going to be a lot different than comparing it to one million, whatever it is. So we need to be careful about the numbers we're using. We need to be careful about keeping ourselves in a position where we can compete with the other retirement communities. Because if we don't sell homes, we don't have FIF money. We don't have FIF money. We're all wasting our time. Because FIF is what makes these plans possible. And this last point is, they said that Bear Lake would never be overused, and they're struggling to find space now. Build it, they will come. The last thing we want to do is put up a structure, whether it's pickleball, whether it's a theater, that is too small three years from now. So we've got to balance those things. Yes, it may be expensive. Yes, you can make an argument it's not worth the money, but is it really if it's a facility that is outdated before it's finished. Those are my points. Thank you. Thank you. Good points. Thank you. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, Actually, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, one more. Um, I talked to John earlier and a couple other people. We're supposed to be coming up with alternatives to the drawings we have. To option two, yes. Um, we don't even understand the drawings. <laughs> Can somebody tell me how high the ceiling is? in the Performing Arts Center? 45 feet. No, that's the outside. How about the inside? Oh, the inside. Will the fire department allow building that top? They have to have access. Uh, are we going to heat and cool all that? Do we have a lift that can get up there and change the light bulbs? Do we have to buy that? How much room is under the stage? Is there room under the stage? How big is the dressing room? Is it 12 by 12 or 30 by 30? We don't know. Well, actually, we can do there's, there aren't any numbers on those drawings. The dimensions aren't by room out there at all. Yeah, they're not in there. No. What's behind the glass but wall? Do we, do we have documents that have those dimensions? Yeah, I, I think we can get those. Okay. I think we can. We have, I, know, I know they were prepared. I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I don't think any of us do, but we can yeah. get it. Well, what I'd really like to know is how was, when we hired this architect, yeah. mm -hmm. what did the board tell us architect? Did we tell them we have $40 million to design a building? Because that building doesn't fit in Sun City. That building belongs in, in Scottsdale or someplace. Uh, it's all the glass walls, it does not fit 
Yeah. The structures that we have in this city, or this area, in our city. Yeah, two, two things. One, yeah, uh, Good point. We're, we are looking at alternatives. So we will get from the architect the room dimensions okay. uh, for that building. So you can compare whatever comes up. Uh, and then the second thing is I don't like Norm either. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There you go. <laughs> You've got to take a number. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. We've used up our time. Uh, I don't know about you, but I thought it was a great discussion today. Yes, good. And I think it sets a stage for when we. No, no pun intended. Five bucks. Pun intended. You got to pay him five bucks. Yeah. I do. Uh, for our discussions about what the alternatives would be. So, Karen gave us one example of it. Uh, you brought up a good point. Let's make sure we understand what the baseline is that we're comparing. So that as John put together on his uh, sheet, that's what's going to be on there, and we're going to start making uh, comparisons. When we do that, we'll be thinking about the usage, right? We know what the baseline is. We'll have to make some of the reasonable assumptions as a group. What do we think it's going to grow to? Whether it's pickleball or whether it's people attending the performance or whatever the case may be, we'll get into that. But I think we have a better feel for how to do that after today. Please do. Okay. Thank, Thank you all. Okay. What's Jean going to do something to show us? Oh, oh Jean. 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 Did you want to show us? Yeah. Oh, we woke her up. of the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated and is intended for the sole purpose of informing our Recreation Center members. Any duplication, copying, transmission, broadcast or use including electronic and social media is strictly prohibited without the prior written consent from the Recreation Centers of Sun City Incorporated. Thank you for watching.